All right, we're joined by Ernest uh, Urtasud, member of the European Parliament, spokesperson uh, for Catalonia and Como. Uh, Ernest, on Sunday we were both in Barcelona, now you're in Strasbourg at the European Parliament. You told us then that uh, you had cast a blank ballot in this uh, banned vote. Uh, since Sunday, not much has budged. There's been no talks between Barcelona and Madrid. Whose job is it to pick up the phone? Well, I think uh, at some point uh, we, uh, we will need some kind of uh, external mediator or, or, uh, to promote dialogue. I think the situation is completely blocked. Um, uh, we are uh, disappointed with the reaction of the European Commission on Monday in relation to uh, the condemnation of violence. I think that, and I think this is a general feeling in Parliament that the, the statement of the Commission should have been much stronger. And tomorrow we will have a debate here in Parliament about the situation. So, in my opinion, what, what we need now is to tell the Spanish government that repression is no solution, that there is a political problem, that we cannot go only uh, um, to try to solve a political problem by means of, of criminal law. This is totally a mistake. Political problems need political solutions. And what we need is dialogue and negotiation. Now, the fear, of course, is that we get into escalation in the coming days. Uh, because uh, there is, well, the, the Catalan government uh, still has to uh, clarify what they will do in the coming days, but there is a risk to have a unilateral declaration of independence in Catalonia, which, uh, in my opinion, will be a big mistake. I don't think this is what we need at the moment. What we need is that all the people that went to the streets like myself on Sunday to protest against police action, that we remain united in Catalonia and we ask and we urge somebody to mediate to find a political solution. I think we'll be, this is we'll what be we asking about who that do. somebody and will tomorrow. be when, when we come back. Uh, Ernest Urtasun, uh, the ups and downs of Gerard Piquet, a bit of a capsule of, uh, well, Spain torn apart over what's going on in Catalonia. Well, I think what happened to Gerard Piquet is, uh, is not acceptable. Uh, and I think this is the kind of, of situations that we need to avoid in the coming days. Um, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to hear some many voices from Madrid, like the one of Pablo Iglesias and, and journalists and others uh, that have been defending uh, uh, Gerard Piquet. I mean, uh, the only thing Gerard Piquet said is that he wanted to go to a vote. And of course, his personal uh, feelings about, uh, about what is going on in Catalonia, they, ne they need to be respected. But most important, and this is the political message I want to pass, the most important thing is the, in the coming days is de-escalation. Uh, these scenes against Piquet are not acceptable. It shouldn't happen. The spokesperson of the Partido Popular, the governing party today, said that the general strike in Barcelona was a na Nazi strike. These kind of statements are completely um, unacceptable. I think we need escalation. We need to resume dialogue, talks. And this is what we are going to ask the European Commission tomorrow in the debate in the Parliament. Please help us resume talks. I think that the Commission will hear that from many of us tomorrow. Ernest Urtasun, we, we saw there was... Uh, coverage that at times seemed uh, skewed on both sides. The coverage you were getting in Spanish was not the same as the one you were getting in Catalan in the build-up and on the day of that vote. No, I, I just wanted to, uh, to react to the, what, what was being said until now. Um, I mean, of course, uh, that there was a legal answer to the referendum. But the legal answer was also a decision taken by the central government. There could have been a political answer, which have been much more smart. This is one thing. The other thing as well, there were, uh, there were order, orders from a judge to suspend the referendum. That's true. But the way it was done, uh, this is a decision of the Home Affairs Minister. It could have been done otherwise without violence. And this is absolutely under the, under the responsibility of the Home Affairs Minister, under Mariano Rajoy, that, as I said the other day, uh, he should immediately resign. I completely uh, uh, don't agree on that. And, on, of, of course, on the things that are happening today in Catalonia, I myself tweeted in, uh, five minutes ago against some harassments to the press. I mean, no, no, uh, no uh, half words about that. I mean, we have to be very clear. But I also have to say that the majority of people in Catalonia are today protesting in a, in a pacific way. Before we ask but you about... Ernest, uh, you, but Ernest, I'm sorry, but have you seen how police yes. officers have to be evacuated from hotels where they have been taking shelter yeah, yeah. because I, there's pressure as, as, for them to said, abandon yeah, yeah. Catalonia? What do you think? What do you, no, but what do you think when you hear people in Catalonia calling police officers murderers and killers? Uh, and uh, as I said at the beginning, uh, insults also in front of the hotels on the, uh, of, of the police officers and what happened to some journalists today in Catalan Parliament as well 
are unacceptable. But I want to be very clear on that. Don't use these events, which are absolutely regrettable and condemnable, don't use these, in the, these events to portray a violent general strike today in Catalonia. That is not correct. I mean, we have to, both things are true. Those events are not acceptable. Uh, pro protests today in Catalonia were peaceful. I think it, we have to be also very clear on that. Ernest Urtasun, who, who do you think can uh, help bring both sides to reason? Well, I think there are, there, there are, of course, different, different options. Uh, there are tools in the Council of Europe, as the, it was being mentioned now. But I think the most important thing for us at the moment is to break a bit the silence of the European Commission. And that is what we, what we, we will intend to do tomorrow. I think that at least what we can expect from the European Commission uh, is not only to condemn violence, but to make a call to resume talks and negotiation. This they are absolutely capable of doing that. And I have to tell you that Vice President Timmermans, who will be with us tomorrow, he will have to, to hear that from many MEPs. So I hope tomorrow we will manage to at least to make the European Commission to move. Then, in a practical matter, uh, is the European Commission the one that needs to do practically that, or is there any other bodies? This we can discuss. I think this is something that we can study in the coming days, but at least we need the Commission to make a clear statement about that. What's going to be the impact of this standoff on the rest of Europe? Well, I think that, uh, that uh, there is a, a general feeling in the European press that the silence of the European Commission, the, of the European Commission is not very acceptable. I think in, uh, uh, during the press conference that the spokesperson of the Commission, Mr. Margaritis, did on Monday, uh, he was pushed by many journalists that were not understanding why the Commission was using these double standards on, uh, on freedom and fundamental rights. Very tough in some countries, and that, but when, when it comes to other countries, more silent. Uh, I think there is also a problem of credibility by the side of the European Commission. If there is not a clear stance in favor of fundamental rights, also in a country like Spain, their credibility is at stake. And that, that is something that we will tell Mr. Timmermans also tomorrow.